Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's exciting today that we have so many things to celebrate. We are celebrating our graduates as well as our entire team of our preschool teachers who are also graduates. All of them got a certificate this year. We're also celebrating our 33rd year of the preschool. So that's a big celebration. You'll notice in the bulletin today uh, many opportunities, and one of the first opportunities is we want you to join us for the brunch. And at the brunch, uh, you'll also receive a beautiful um, folder that has all the pictures of the graduates we're celebrating today, as well as all the teachers we're celebrating today, and the preschool, the VPK graduates. So I know several people said, where's that insert? You know, they wanted to see your pictures because they always know we have the graduates' uh, pictures. They are available in the lobby when we go towards the brunch. Even if you can't stay for the brunch, make sure you get a brochure because uh, it's a wonderful way to see everybody's face and name. It also will tell, is this a grandchild of someone? Is this a church member? Um, we're very excited to celebrate that today. You'll notice today the flowers are given in God's glory uh, to celebrate the anniversary, 57th wedding anniversary, uh, for David and Louise Crankshaw. Let's <laughs> say happy anniversary. 57 years. Wonderful, wonderful. You'll notice in the bulletin opportunities for Bible school, for our kids' summer program that's already started, so we have a wonderful time together. Let us stand now for our opening hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. our faith using the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. before you're seated if you'll turn and greet one another and notice there are a lot of guests from our preschool families and graduate families great to have everybody here today At this time, I want to invite all of our graduates to come forward along the front of this altar rail. If you'll have all of the graduates uh, come forward. And we have a video that we're going to share that shows all their pictures and where they graduated from. If y'all will just stand right there in front of the altar, that'd be great. Get them all lined up here. All right. We got a lot. And some could not be here today, but we've got their video picture and we're celebrating. Uh, and some are graduates from the preschool I didn't even know were coming, so that's exciting too. Some are graduating from college and high school. And I mean, these are folks back to celebrate the preschool too. So. We're very excited. I don't have all of their names, but we're going to give everybody a round of applause at the end. Yeah. <laughs> all righty, I think we're ready to begin. Let's get started. Alexandra Bowling, Master's in Psychology from Marquette. Gabriella Bowling, a Tulane University, a Juris Doctor. Emily Keith Hill of Juris Doctor, University of Miami. Alex White, MBA of Intelligence and Business. Madison Eichner, BS in Health Science, Florida Gulf Coast. Colin Furs, a BA in History and Economics, University of Florida. Lauren Groves, a BS in Marine Biology, Nova Southeastern. Brittany Haskell, a BS in Advertising, University of South Florida. Alan Ortez, Bachelor of Music, Florida Atlantic University. Courtney Wisniewski, a BA in Advertising, Pepperdine. Presley Allman, Boulder High School, uh, attending New York School of Design. Nicholas Eichner, Stoneman Douglas High School, attending Florida State. Cassidy Hay, uh, Colbert Eastern High School, attending Auburn. Daniel LaSalle, South Broward High, attending Miami Dade. Emily Ramos, South Plantation, attending Cosmetology School. Caitlin Wilson, South Plantation High School, uh, and she doesn't know what she's gonna do yet. Kylie Wilson, South Plantation, attending Broward College. FUMC Preschool Class of 2024. The FUMC Fort Lauderdale Preschool teachers all got their child development associate. Woo! I want them to stand too. Stand up, teachers. Stand up, teachers.
And now what I want the folks who came to celebrate our preschool and after school, will you raise your hands? Because I didn't read your names. All the ones who came back from our preschool and after school. It just shows you how many people have been impacted by our preschool these 33 years. And uh, when we're at the brunch, I do have some cards, uh, particularly for those who are graduating seniors. We do have our high school um, seniors do receive a token from our pastor's fund to help with some of your expenses or a little something to help. So we're excited to share that as well. Y'all may be seated. At this time, I'm inviting a preschool director, Leone Buchanan, to share with us our celebration of 33 years of the preschool. Woo! Good morning, everyone. And yes, I'm wearing Nova because I'm crossing the stage Friday. <laughs> so in celebration of both graduation and our 33 years in ministry as a, pre as a preschool and after care, I'm going to first welcome all my graduates. I'm going to call your name. And I'm also going to tell you how long they have been here at the preschool. So first, Myra Gonzalez, our director, assistant director. <laughs> 16 years. You can hold the applause till after because I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Myra uh, Maria Arbelez, 11 years. She's not here. Monica Baza, one year. Jamisha Brown, 16 years. Myself, eight years. Mabel Buchanan, right here, five years. Darlene Calhoun, two years. Irma Castro, 17. Zoila Castro, one. Karen, who I think is in the kitchen, she's been 11 years. Maria Fink, seven. Kayla Havens, one. Rhode Havens, 12. Jean Henry, 16. Myra Medina, two. Maria Mejia, who's been here the longest, 20 years. <laughs> Cynthia McGee, two years. Rashida Mohammed, 11. Paula Moore, 19 years. Rosemary Neely, 17. Anodia Scott, 1. Jorge Sanchez, 1. Davika, 15. Dan Smith, I don't think he's here, 3 years. Betty Williams, 1. Then some of our former, these are our graduates, some of our former teachers, I don't know if she's here, but Miss Donna Hayes, come on up. 17, Miss Angela Jenkins, who has been here since for 21 years. Gina Green, I don't remember how long you've been here. Gina, uh, is Miss Delta here? Yes. Miss Delta, come on down. I'm calling up all our former teachers. Miss Lourdes, are you here? Yes. Lourdes. Miss Fanny, did she come? No. Linda, Linda Rotman, come on down. Lettucey, no. And Miss Angelica, did I miss anybody? <laughs> Miss Layla in the back. <laughs> forget about you. <laughs> uh, we call Miss Rowe there in the back. So this is 33 years in ministry. These are some of our teacher, Miss Rowe, come on down. And we just want to thank them. Uh, for their work, the ones in the graduating outfits graduated from the Early Learning Coalition Academy with their National Child Care Development Associate Certification. I also want to recognize some of our former students that are here. If you want to stand, I see the Holcombs are here. My two grandchildren, Amina and Alex, I see Ariana, um, stand. Miss Leone doesn't remember everybody's name, but I remember all your faces. Thank you, thank you for coming back to visit with us. You may be seated. Also, 33 years 
in ministry has a lot of people in the background that's always supporting us. I'm going to call some names, and if I, get any, if I forget you, please know you're in our hearts. But Nurse Reedy, who is always there for us every Tuesday, always making sure we're okay. Lynn Kramer, who hired me, she would never let me forget that. <laughs> Sally Glenn, who is one of our former board chairperson. Cindy White, Tom White, Winnie Warnke, Kurt Warnke, Lindsay Payne, who is always driving the bus for us, uh, Lynn Mandeville, who has always been there for us, Sherry Whittingham, and Miss Bonnie, who is always cooking those lovely cakes for us. I don't know if she's here, but Bonnie does some magnificent blueberry cake. And everyone else, if I forgot your name and you're here, you, you just know that we appreciate you. We know behind the scenes, Pastor Jill is always telling us that you guys are giving up your time, your resources, and your finances to the preschool. This is the face of our preschool and our aftercare. We would not be remiss if we did not forget to mention uh, Ms. Sharon uh, Swart, who has passed on, but she was the head of our aftercare department, and we remember her in spirit. And do we forget anybody else? No. And if I forget you, I'm sorry. But 33 years ago, there was a pioneer behind the scene that started all this as um, Mother's Day out. 33 years later, we have grown beyond just being the Mother's Day out to a full-blown preschool and aftercare program. This would not be without the vision of one lady, and she's going to kill us afterwards, sorry. <laughs> but she has always been there for us. Behind the scenes, she's calling, she's here, she's making sure we're okay, you know, giving up her time, talent, and finances to Ms. Eleanor Welch, could you please come to the front? This is just a small token of appreciation for starting this ministry and to making sure that we continue to grow. 33 years. And again, to all, if I forgot to mention your name, you're in our hearts, and we appreciate you all. You can come by Monday through Friday. You can see them in, in their glory, in what they do. We love what we do, and we'll continue for the next 33 years. Thank you. Oh. Our founder would like to give a word. 33 years. I wasn't the founder. I'm just the one who helped grow the preschool. Uh, we had many people from Mother's Day out, and our minister at the time decided that it was getting so big downtown that we could be a ministry to the downtown community and maybe even bring in some people to the congregation, which we have done. And so I'm, I thank God every day when I see these wonderful teachers and director and director, we're, there we go. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's so great that 33 years have gone by and we still have a preschool. And it is such an honor to have been here to start it. And even though I'm not here, I'm still come and visit. So thank you so much. And thanks for all these teachers. Myra just whispered that Lavenia, you're here. You didn't stand or you didn't come forward. But Lavenia was also a teacher here at the preschool. Where is she? And again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. 33 years.
Our scripture reading today begins with uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 22 through 53. Hear now the word of God. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel. He spread out his hands toward heaven and said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and it is with your hand you have fulfilled it as it is today. Now, Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your descendants are careful in all that they do to walk before me faithfully as you have done. And now, God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, could not contain you how much less this temple that I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy, Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence today. May your eyes be open towards this temple, night and day, this place of which you said my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayers your servant prays towards this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. When anyone wrongs their neighbor and is required to take an oath, and they come and swear the oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty by bringing down on the heads what they have done and vindicate the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. And when your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and give praise to your name, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave their ancestors. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, because your people have sinned against you. And when they pray toward this place and give praise to your name and turn from their sin because of your affliction, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live. Send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. And when famine or plague comes or land or blight or mildew or locust or grasshoppers, and when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease might come, and when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, being aware of the affliction of their own hearts, spreading their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven, your dwelling place. Forgive and act and deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts, for you alone know every human heart so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land you gave our ancestors. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people, Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for they will hear your great name and your mighty hand, will, your outstretched arms, when they come and pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your own people Israel. And may they know that this house I have built bears your name. And then from Matthew 6, nineteen, sorry, looks like that. Matthew 6, uh, 9 through 13. Jesus said, then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
O oh Lord, most holy and gracious, we do come before you, acknowledging the wondrous gift of your love, especially in the Son, Jesus, the one we call Christ. Enable my words to be your message for each of us, your people, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the season of graduations, many remarks are made about what makes for a good commencement address or what does not. The entire season is devoted to congratulating what has been accomplished and achieved as a milestone. And yet, the word commencement means to begin. Does it mean to end? or to accomplish. Commencement means let's get this thing started. So the focus is what will be your next step? What will you be able to begin in the next chapters ahead of you? What wise words will inspire you to make good decisions? What life lessons can you observe and learn from? You see, for every season, there is a time of adventure, of newness, of change. What we want to bring from the past is important, and King Solomon knew this. The reason I chose to use King Solomon's prayer is because he was becoming a leader. He was commencing in something very big, something that his father had prayed for for many years to build the temple, to build a place where God would be honored and yet God can never be contained. The earliest days of this church, it was called Park Temple. One of the reasons to use that name was to recognize the, the presence of God in the heart of the city. King Solomon knew very well he was stepping into a chapter of leadership and a legacy that was much bigger than him. Generations that had come before him had planted the seeds, and even his father had raised the funds needed to make this temple dream come true. One of the things about Solomon, the reason he was entrusted to do this building, was that he was a peacemaker. You see, his father had the blood of many wars and difficulties on his hands, and God would not allow King David to build the temple. King David's family had a lot of confusion at times. They had a blended family, and not everybody was on the same page. When Solomon was young, he helped to write the book of Proverbs. And in Proverbs 15, 17, Solomon writes, it is better to eat vegetables and a table surrounded by love than to eat the fatted calf where hostility abounds. He was talking about his own siblings. I'd rather eat vegetables with people who love one another than to eat the fatted calf with people who are angry and resentful and cruel to one another. You see, from a young age, Solomon resolved to be a peacemaker, to seek wisdom rather than a position of power. Interestingly enough, God entrusted him with position and with power. At the center of Solomon's experience was prayer. Prayer was the glue that held him together. Prayer was the firm foundation when the earth around him was shaking. His father, David, always believed the greatest legacy and gift he was giving his son, Solomon, was a kingdom and wealth to build the temple to God. But that was not the greatest gift David gave his son. The greatest gift David gave his son was prayer and a connection to God. That was the greatest legacy of all, staying in prayer with one another, staying in communion with God. 
This is why we share this today on Graduate Sunday. The prayer that you have, the opportunity that you have to connect with God and one another, that is the most valuable thing you possess. Your diploma, your degree is very valuable. But your prayer and your connection to God and to a community will take you a lot farther than any degree. You see, prayer keeps us humble as we seek guidance. Prayer gives us boundaries to pull away from the crowd mentality and the clamor and the noise all around pulling for our attention. Prayer keeps us grounded in principles and patterns that guide us towards integrity, purpose, and healthy relationships. Prayer helps us see a bigger picture, including the consequences of our choices and the possible opportunities that lie ahead. Jesus' disciples noticed that Jesus was a prayer where was he going when he withdrew from the crowds to pray? What was he doing before every major decision he ever made? Praying. What was the guiding force and the source of strength for him to go the distance? Prayer. You see how important prayer is? The disciples pull Jesus aside in Matthew and they say, Lord, Teach us to pray. We see how it defines your life. We see how it gives you something we do not have. How do we pray? There are five parts to the Lord's Prayer. Jesus teaches them to adore and praise God. Jesus teaches them to ask that God's will be done. Jesus teaches them to ask for their daily needs to be met. Jesus teaches them to ask for forgiveness. And Jesus teaches them to ask for protection. Basically, Jesus is showing the disciples a template, a prearranged plan. It helps to have a plan. The teachers can tell you how important a plan is. Many teachers will have a plan that has three points. We're going to cover these three things today. Some people have a, teach, a plan that's five points. We're going to teach you five things today. Jesus is using the five-point plan. We have five fingers. He's probably telling them, adore and praise. Number one, ask for God's will to be done. Number two, ask for your daily needs to be met. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for protection. Five. That is his plan. That is his template. Jesus is showing the disciples that there are basic things in life that we need to know. First of all, who we are and whose we are. Praise him. In Psalm 103, King David declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And he lists five. Again, David is using this method and template of prayer in the Old Testament. Before Jesus walked the earth, he lists five benefits of having a connection to God. Forgiveness, healing, rescue, favor, and blessing because of the covenant. In the Old Testament, Daniel, a wise young Jewish man in exile in Babylon, offers a prayer on behalf of his entire nation because he realizes that Israel had become corrupt and it abused its situation and its power, and the exile was a punishment for the abuses of power. So Daniel, while in exile, prays for God to forgive his own nation, forgive Israel, receive us, help us to reconcile to you, return us to the land of our ancestors. Jesus describes prayer as a reorientation. It's a new position. 
It is the position to listen and to learn. How many teachers will say to their kids, be quiet, it's time to listen and learn. That's what prayer is, time to be quiet, listen and learn. God gave us two ears and one mouth on purpose. We should be listening twice as much as we're talking. Sometimes we listen, but only to come up with our own clever response. We aren't really letting it sink in. How much of our problems in the world today are miscommunication. People have forgotten how to listen, how to stop and pause and take it in. Jesus attempts to reorient his followers to listen to God and to listen to each other. I'm here to listen and to learn is what prayer says. Now, Winston Churchill was asked to give a commencement address for Oxford University in the middle of World War II. He showed up to the podium. He began his speech. He said three words. Never give up. He waited 30 seconds. He said it again. Never give up. And he walked away. That was his commencement address to Oxford University in the middle of World War II. Never give up. Isn't this a key lesson? Jesus is reminding us as his disciples, pray, pray. Pray and never give up. You see, prayer keeps us humble. It guides us. It calms us in the midst of chaos. Prayer helps us to meet one another in worship, to meet God in worship. Prayer helps us to accept the stranger. Did you see that even Solomon said, people who are not from Israel, who come and turn to your temple, hear their prayer. Help us to honor the covenant we have made with you in every generation. Prayer is a reorientation. It's a time to calm and to focus, to listen and to learn. Sometimes we need a point of reference. For Apollo 13, Jim Lovell said his reference point was to stare at the earth. You see, they were having mechanical difficulty and they said, we need at least 39 seconds for you to have enough energy to recalibrate and to return home. If you can't pause for 39 seconds, you will not make it home. Now, 39 seconds doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're shutting down every single thing you have, every device, every mechanical assistance device for 39 seconds, he's looking at the earth. He says, that is what he saw. That is what he looked at. He didn't need anything else. I want to ask you today, can you pause for 39 seconds a day? Can you stop all of your attachments, all of your devices, and just pause? 39 seconds doesn't sound like much, but it could literally save your life. Stop, pause, focus, reorient. We celebrate our graduates today in our preschool, which has been so important these 33 years I've been here 10 years, and just to see the number of families that have come through, and the children, and then the graduates that come back in our after school and other programs, it's just exciting to see everybody here today. The church at its best not only celebrates and commemorates important life events, it helps to make memories that are lasting. It also reminds us that the greatest lessons of all that are foundational to life, connect us to God and connect us to each other. To God be the glory, great things he has done. May his name ever be praised. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Our song of reflection is open our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to learn wisdom from your word, your Holy Spirit, and from our prayers. We anticipate that wisdom through prayer might clear our heads and satisfy our hearts. We yearn for deeper, richer, and wisdom-filled lives as you've described. Almighty God, we humbly ask that you grant us wisdom to make sound choices and decisions. Open our eyes and ears as we listen and learn when we pray. Give us good spiritual judgment to distinguish right from wrong. Help us to not rely solely on our limited understandings, but trust in your infinite knowledge to guide our steps. Dear Lord, today we pray for our graduates, both young and old. Especially we lift up those graduating from high school and college as they enter into uncharted paths. We pray that as they embark on their individual journeys, they will grow in wisdom and understanding with you as their priority. O oh Lord, many of us have learned hard but valuable lessons during our own life experiences. Certainly one of the most significant educations is that the wisest and most successful people use prayer to connect with God and to gain clarity about their future. Please help our graduates to know this truth. Today, O oh God, we recognize the outstanding contributions and achievements of our preschool as we celebrate their 33 years of existence. We can't even imagine or comprehend the magnitude of positive influence and foundational grounding that our preschool educators have had over the hundreds of students that attended our school. We pray for our current educational team and their wisdom and decision-making as we look to a bright future. In addition, we're so grateful for our new partnerships in education and their extensive outreach opportunities to every generation. Lastly, dear Lord, we pray for the leaders and pastors of this church. We ask that you speak to each one with clear and specific instructions, just as you did to Solomon, so they will fully know their roles and direction. Whether it is leading the congregation, directing a specific group, or coordinating a church repair project. Help each and every one to have clarity of vision and divine-led wisdom in the execution of their duties. These things we ask in your blessed name and as you taught us to pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn. As you hear the benediction, I also want to offer a prayer for our brunch together. And don't forget, whether or not you're able to stay uh, for the event, uh, we do have these wonderful programs and has every graduate. And uh, sorry we didn't have all the graduates from the um, preschool through the years, uh, because that was a wonderful thing to see, too, all the folks who came back. We also invite you uh, to sign uh, this so that we know who was here today and contact information. And we want to remind you our um, offering pedestals receive our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. Let me offer a prayer together. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for what God has done and then through this community, especially our preschool and our graduation we just want to pray for our brunch and our opportunity to gather and to break bread together for the wonderful memories that are shared. We give you thanks and praise for the food and the hands that prepared it. Lord, we also invite us or invite each one to know that you are with them, that you are encouraging to them. Bless us, guide us, direct us. May your name be praised forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we go now in peace. Amen. Amen.